Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and today, so here's what the Fridays we've been calling donation day. Yeah, but that doesn't really fly outside of our crew. Right. No one really knows what that means. Right, so we're gonna, and I asked Daniel, it's like, well, can we change the name to Craft Whiskey Days? Because a lot, most of them are craft. Most of them are, but sometimes we'll get rare scotches and, you know, or it's, it's just hard to get whiskey. So, the previously known donation day shall henceforth be known as Rare Whiskey Day. What do we mean by Rare Whiskey what Day? What we mean by rare is it's going to be hard for just any normal human being to stop by a store and buy this. Yes. And on our, you know, Monday through Thursday episodes, we try, can't always do it, but we try to review whiskeys that a lot of people are likely to be able to get their hands on. Uh... But for Rare Whiskey Day, the chances are you're probably not going to be able to get it unless you're near the distillery. But, right. but it's worth reviewing. We often find a diamond in the rough. Yes, we do. And if you are fortunate enough to get your hands on one of those kinds of whiskeys, then it's, it's amazing. Like, for example. Right. All right. What are we doing? Now, we've done this whiskey before at some point. I can't remember when. Yes. Maybe somebody can find it. I searched for it on our channel. Could not find it. Okay. But Brendan Kite, who is now, I think, full weddled it. Is he full weddled? He's full weddled it. All right, so Brendan Kite, you you full weddle of whiskey. And also, While we're doing that. I'm actually picturing airplanes flying by that I'm trying to trace. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. I would also like to add in for full weddle ceremonies, just some ball busting, because what the hell were you thinking, <laughs> sending that many whiskeys? To two idiot YouTubers, yeah. just so they can give their two-bit freaking opinions on the interwebs. Drink the whiskey, man. <laughs> Drink the whiskey. There's there's no reason why you need to send us stuff. You and are just too nice for your own good. <laughs> no, we appreciate it, but honestly, uh, for whatever whiskeys you don't want to send to us, you want to enjoy yourself, or, or better yet, enjoy with other magnificent bastards. And man, the the, the Echelon, the pinnacle of magnificence. You try a whiskey, you give some specific notes in one of the social mm -hmm. groups there of what you are experiencing in that whiskey. That's that's perfect, do that. Okay. But, but thank you. Thank this you. is Starlight Distillery. It has the, um, the honor and the problem of being a distillery in Indiana. Oh yeah. The honor because, hey, why not? And the problem because if it says distilled on Indiana in the back of your bottle, Every yokel Yahoo in the store is gonna be like, oh, MGP. MGP uh, yeah. But this is actually made in Indiana. This Ooh. is actually made, they're actually distilling this themselves, aging this themselves. And uh, they've been uh, doing uh, distilling for generations. Okay. Um, they were doing a lot of fruit based stuff and brandies, the Huber family. Okay. And um, they've got a huge farm. And now they're doing whiskeys. All right. So we're in a time crunch, Daniel. Bourbon. We're doing first impressions. Okay. First impressions. Bop, 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 bop. We got like, what, six, five? Something yeah. like that. All right. Five. Slightly thin, a little bit of mint. And then I'm getting a little bit of a uh, light cinnamon and nutmeg. Yeah. I get, this is a, this is a very uh, Christmassy nose. Not, not watery thin, but kind of light and airy thin. Yes, absolutely. In, yeah. in the sense that um, it's doing some things, but it's doing them in a hush. In, a, in a, a voice of reverence. Yes, yes, yes. This is like, like it's explaining itself to you in a library. <laughs> you know what else you know you know I like about part of the full Weddle ceremony being ball busting? Huh. He is such a ball buster. He is. Mitch Weddle, oh my gosh. He really is. Oh. The video that he shot. <laughs> I just wanted to drink whiskey. I got a, I got a box full of just paraphernalia. Yeah, he's still, still, <laughs> still, yeah. Springy on the tongue, like the way your tongue feels after you've had something carbonated. Feels that that kind of springy, buzzy, fuzzy. It's really sweet. It is sweet. It's slightly tannic, but it's it's this sort of like but like the, simple sweet. The tannic for, for me is presenting as like a carbonated water. Yeah, I get that. Carbonated water bitterness, right? This there. reminds me of the sweetness of homemade simple sugar. Right. Wait, wait, you ever wait. you ever have actual simple sugar? Simple sugar. Yeah. Where it's just it's just sugar, water and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not you can pick. It's sort of you could head in honey. Sort of you might be able to head. Vanilla, yeah, but it's really just sugars. And behind the sugars, there's a trace of cinnamon and nutmeg. And, uh, nutmeg. Yeah, a little bit of spice back there. Okay, let's That's good. switch. That's good. That's there's none of the weird uh, newbie notes. This is copper pot still, right on. Yeah, there's none of the the off notes that you get when people are new to figuring out distilling or aging. It's 47.5 percent. These guys know what they're doing. 47.5 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's switch to the cask strength version. 
Yeah. So this is the same whiskey. This is selected by Kenosha Woodman's. This is barrel 1564. Wait, so that's the same thing cask strength? Yeah, same whiskey, but well, cask strength. That wasn't phoning it in. No, no, it wasn't. I mean, it was light. That was 47.5%. Mm -hmm. That's a high proof rate. And how old is yours? This one's three years old. Uh, Turn it around. Right here, somewhere. Two. Two. Okay. okay. Two and three. So this is one year older and cask strength. Same ash bill? I'm assuming it doesn't say on here. Okay. So I'm finding more of that uh, that antique wood barrel. Yeah, I was, that's what I was going to say too. The wood notes jumped up a little bit. The sweetness sort of got buried. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it's still there. It's mm -hmm. just taking a back seat to this old, mature, antique wood. Walk into an antique store and the smell of the furniture in there. You know what? Oh. You know what? Higher proof, cast strength. Yeah. It goes down easier. It does, but the aftertaste is all the bitter wood notes. Is it? For me. All right, hold it's on. A dip, it's a better sweetness. Yeah. It's a better flavor overall, okay. I think. I do enjoy it. It feels more cohesive. Yeah. And, and on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's not as tentative. Um, but it's still, it accented everything. It brought a roundness to the sugars, yeah. turned the sugar into caramel and vanilla, and then brought the wood notes alive at the same time. So I'm finding everything I found in their two-year-old version. Mm -hmm. Me too. Same, the lower proof version. I'm finding yep. all those notes. But it's in addition to this new antique wood, and it feels like it's a more cohesive, melted together kind of experience. Add a dash of water. And and it's the best of the three. And that higher proof comes across as a, effectively for me, smoother. Taking the cask and, and just adding a little water opened this up to the middle ground between these two. It made it almost floral, but oh, still woody. The dessert elements really come alive there. But it doesn't get hushed and buried. Oh, now I'm getting, ah. And the difference Almost. is this was so here's the thing. forty seven point five. Little cinnamon, a little nutmeg in there. What this is turning into, the cash strength with a touch of water, it pulls back the curtain on a really nice, like a sh like an Irish shortbread cookie. Yeah, I get that. You know what's weird about this? Yeah. Their non cask strength is still forty seven percent. Okay. Their cask is forty nine percent. Man, if look, these have to be the same mash bill. They are oh, yeah, much yeah. The too same whiskey. Much too similar. For it to okay, be. so. Man, their cask strength is that low. I wonder what they're putting it in a barrel at. Well, what did you say it was? 49. What, hold on, hold on. This was a higher... 47. All right, so this was 47.5. Yeah. Their cask strength is 49. And so I'm wondering what they put it into the barrel at. And which, is, which, remember, if you put lower, you start oh, pulling more sugar and less right. tannin. That's right. So they could be going in pretty low. Okay. I like that one. But they also have a rye. Okay. Now between the two, I like the cask one better. Like Even though it's only two percent higher, I like the cask one better with a little dash of water there. There a little, it is. A little dash of the waters. It's rye time that we drink this whiskey. Sorry. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried. This one's ringing in at fifty-six point two percent. Okay. It's also cask strength. This is the same distillery. Yeah. This is a much higher proof, and on the nose, it's much more invisible. Well, there is much more nose presented on these lower proof uh, entries. I should, I would say, I agree with you of what you mean is there's more going on in the nose, but this is a yeah. strong nose. No, to I, me. I, no, we're on different. How much water did you? Different have? wavelengths here. Put I didn't. In your glass. I didn't. You think I had? Well, I rinsed it out. I swallowed. Yeah. And here's the thing. Maybe I, I had rinsed too much water. I rinsed it out. I swallowed, and then I flung all the drops that on the ground. Be, that should be enough. It should be good. It should be good. I'm getting a sort of musty note to this. So what I'm getting is... But not your typical rye notes. No, I'm not getting rye. I'm getting... Uh, uh, sound horrible. I'm getting like a wood-flavored vodka. Uh-oh. Yeah, it is reminding me of... In California, I went to this place where they were distilling vodka from grape mesh. Okay. That's not what it is. And basically making a grappa, but higher proof. And, uh, and then they were aging that in wood. Okay. Oak. So and it's... it's you say this is, here's the thing, I'm saying a wood flavored vodka with a thread of vanilla in there, but you're saying this is rye. Yeah. I'm not finding on the nose, rye, like the, the, the black anise, the licorice, I'm not finding even me either. rye spice, rye spiciness on the nose. It's not, it's not there for me. I'm getting huh. wood flavored vodka with a thread of vanilla on the nose I'm going to taste now. I'm not a fan of this one, but you know, remember, I'm a wrong person to select interesting rise. This is always one we need to like Skype in Kurt Miller. Here's the thing. 
enjoyable but simple. Mm -hmm. On the taste, it's better than the nose. Better than the nose. It's boring. But uh, I'm getting the vanilla, that wood, and then it just feels like a... This is four years old. Just a two-dimensional whiskey there. How is that the case? It's four years old cask strength and it still tastes simple. Right. If you're a classic rye lover, I don't mm -hmm. think you're gonna find a lot of familiar things in there. No, you're not. But this is gonna be, it's a, it's a good background whiskey, something that's just kinda sweet, not too complicated to demand your attention, uh, enjoyable enough. But man, there are other two offerings. These were much more interesting. I like those, yeah. These are much more fun and interesting. Let's, uh, let's do two gifts from Richard Carmichael. Richard Carmichael, you magnificent bastard. So Richard is, uh, we'll start with this one. This is a wheat whiskey. Okay. So wheat whiskey is from Virginia. If I remember correctly, they usually present as sweet and soft and usually pretty simple. Yeah, that's my memory. Okay. But I've only had a half dozen to a dozen wheat okay. whiskeys. And, and it's like a sugary sweetness, softness, and relatively, okay. That's weird. This has had things going on here. Yeah. This, this reminds me of my first experience with Wiggle whiskeys. Bare knuckle American wheat whiskey. What's the proof? It's 40, not a whiskey. 45. It's not a whiskey if you're not calling back on old timey things. Yeah. Yay. Oh, uh, like okay. Is it, is it, it's almost like a, um, there's a slight, I'm going to say sour, with an undertone of um, some sweetness, whiskey sweetness from, is that a multi whiskey sweetness? What, am I, what do I have here? American wheat whiskey. It's not. No, it's not malt. It presents almost as like a maltiness on that. Oh, it's not in the taste. Yeah, no, the taste is fine. Taste is fine. And I'm well, getting. You know, what? I'm back into. And now I can't smell it anymore. This. All right. So this, as far as wheat whiskeys goes, mm -hmm. this is a little bit more of a nuanced wheat whiskey. It's interesting. Yeah. There's it's more not, going on. It's not a simple sweetness. It's not too soft. There is some some liveliness there. It's springy on the tongue. Again, kind of like the way your tongue feels after you had something carbonated, like a carbonated water. But then you go back to the nose. You go back to the nose, and it's, it's again. Yeah, I have yet to find a wheat whiskey. That really just makes me excited to drink wheat whiskey. I've met several that I thought were fine. So I'm gonna say <laughs> it has like a, a little bit of this buttered cinnamon toast if you're using a wheat bread. Wheat bread, yeah, buttered cinnamon Yeah, I can see toast. what you mean by that. Really slight amount of cinnamon, slight amount of butter, and then just the, the grainy wheatness. Mm -hmm. That to me, that wheat almost presents as a maltiness on that sweetness. I get that. Yeah. All right, what's the next one? All right, we're moving to Cut Spike Malt Whiskey. And this is cut spike. Cut spike, and uh, from Nebraska. Oh, okay, interesting. All right, this is. Does this have rye? No, it's I'm malt. Gonna, no, it's no, a no. Single malt. There's, there's more rye spiciness. There's more spiciness. Spice. Well, for, fine, fine. We'll just say spiciness. There's mm -hmm. more spiciness in this single malt than there is from that rye from the uh, Starlight Distillery. This explodes out of the glass yeah, this, with like. Fruity notes. Oh, and dude, I'm, I'm not backing off of to me this single malt is presenting as a rice spiciness I know there's no rye in there, but I'm saying that spicy note to me is very very close to a rye spice I'm almost getting some like grape notes in there. Okay. I mean just like super dark fruity Mixed with this really fresh kind of vibrant and then there's a little bit of that malty coffee hint But this is the weirdest nose on a malt I've ever <laughs> smelled right so the maltiness isn't completely absent. Yeah. The maltiness is there, but it's underneath this spicy element you're calling in some dark fruit notes. Yeah. And I'm saying some honey. But it's overall, it's not dark. It's shiny and fresh. And and, and I'm gonna say grainy, even though I know it's about, I'm gonna say a grainy honey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the oh. maltiness on the taste. Maltiness on the taste. Yeah, very dust grain malt round. Yeah. So, rich, super, super malty beers, right? The people who really just like. Yeah, not malt. hoppy beers. No. Malty beers. The malt on this thing is for real. Mm -hmm. On the taste. On the taste, it is. Uh, uh, it's, it's rich, 
I was about to say thick, but thick means it would feel yeah, a little bit more it does. viscous. No, it's, it's rich, it's very present, and it's so present that on the nose it presents as a little bit of a spiciness. A little bit of a spiciness. It's so much malt that yeah. it almost turns into a rye spice note on the nose, and then on the taste it's just all that just uh, that wide, rounded, rich, you know, that, that almost right out of the out of, out of the farm. Yeah. Right? You feel like you're on a farm. You do. You really do. I mean, you're in like the, a well man, well cleaned barn. Yeah. With all the grain piles and the hay and yeah. This has more grains than just. I know it doesn't, but it tastes like it has more grains than just uh, barley. I'm not. Th this one's a. This one's a complex whiskey. This man. is. This is not a background whiskey. This is one you're gonna have to sit. And just sort of you know what this is? explore. This is a granola. <gasps> yes, it is. It's a granola, and not a granola bar. Not with all the sugar things, but but if, but like a like if one of your if one of your super healthy friends, right? Your ve like, your, your ve vegan friends <laughs> here have some granola, right? <laughs> uh, it totally is. Yeah, and then it's held together with some honey. Yeah. All right. All day. All right. I added a little water. Okay. I like that. It's good, but man, the oh. malt coming off of that thing. Water made it a little boring. I would keep it at what it was, which mm. was 43%. percent mm Mhm. All right. I think we did it. Game on, baby. Yeah. I think we had some really good options in there. Here's to fighting, stealing, and perhaps drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink... May you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.